Well, hello, hello. I'm Sonny Melendrez, and welcome to the positive side of the radio spectrum. This is the all-new Sonny Melendrez Show. Now, each week, we strive to bring you inspiration and entertainment through storytelling, fascinating guests, exclusive celebrity interviews, and all delivered to you with lots of enthusiasm. And by the way, you can always listen to the show on demand at sunnyradio.com slash show. So, without any further ado... On with the show. Sunny Radio, SunnyRadio.com, San Antonio. And have I got a show for you with not one, but two incredible guests. One of them is the executive director of Any Woman Can. Shan Wiley will tell you all about what Any Woman Can is, does, and the amazing, the amazing work they do. Not only that, but something that's uh, coming up, a very big event. In fact, that's how we kind of segue into our second guest, who just happens to be married to Shan. They met out in the lobby, <laughs> and we uh, performed a little so- right. <laughs> little uh, ceremony. There. ceremony. <laughs> And, you know, that's life. Uh, <laughs> Baron Wiley is, is a dear friend. We've known each other for decades. He is the director of sales at Salem Media Group, which is where we uh, perform the show live in front of a uh, taped audience. <laughs> 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 and uh, Baron is also a mas- master impressionist, Allegedly. which is near and dear to my heart. Uh. So let's get into the fun. First of all, Shan, Baron, nice to have you here. Thank you. So honored. I, I can't tell you. This, this is so great. I will tell you that, Baron, can you t- just tell us a little short story of, of how you and I kind of... I'm, I'm happy to. So I'm going to San Antonio College, uh, taking all the radio, TV, film courses that I can. And then my uh, professor came to me and said, hey, there's a guy named Sonny Melendrez who is uh, looking for an assistant, and I think you should go apply. And I gave him every excuse of, man, if I did that, I'd have to drop your class. And he goes, drop my class. He says, you will learn more from Sonny than anything that I could teach you. So I went and said, I don't know if you remember this, but I interviewed with you and you asked me, why would I want to work with you? Yes. And I said, well, obviously I could stand to learn a lot. But at that time, you were at Magic 105 right there on, in Windcrest right next to the skating rink. And I said, so not only could I learn a lot from you, but I, I also skate. So it's real convenient <laughs> for me to, to leave and then go skate. And you went, and you went, really? And I went, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and then you laughed and that kind of sealed the deal that we had some chemistry. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful season. And we're, to still work together, again, that was early 90s. Yes, exactly. Wow. And then I came over here to, to KLUP yep. and then you followed. Uh, Thanks you were to first you. as a producer and then you got into sales and now you're running the show. Wow. This is incredible. This, this is a circle of life, Shan. Circle yes. of life, yes. Yeah, exactly. Now, now, Shan, any woman can. What is it that Any Woman Can does? Well, Any Woman Can is a medical center that helps people that come in with a crisis. So there's several different people that we can help. Those that might have an unplanned pregnancy, those that are looking at possibly having an STI. And then we also do counseling, free professional counseling for women of ages 13 to any age, really. So if someone is facing a time in life where they're just... Um, having a hard time, then we want to be there for them. Mm. I've, I've been to your facilities. They're just beautiful. And uh, you, I understand, have a great success rate. Well, it's been amazing. I mean, we are there and we have um, been able to counsel 10% more than last year because of opening it up. We counsel those that um, have are not able to speak. We have ASL interpreters. I mean, we're just growing and growing and, and adding things every day to help more and more women. How, how did this all get started? Well, I actually was um, in the in between jobs. And so they've been there for six years. Any woman can has been there for six years. And I hadn't heard of it about a year and a half ago. And I got a phone call when I had already accepted a position with a big bank and asked if I wanted to interview. So um, there was just enough time, actually, to get that interview in and a second interview and tour and was just really, I think, well, I don't think, I know God led me there. Sure. Because one, I had never heard of it, and two, I would have never even applied. Mm-hmm. And so it just, once I toured, I fell in love with it and just knew that I had to be there because if I, if God was going to use me to just affect one life, then it was going to be worth 
yeah, to oh, making absolutely. that decision. Now, I'll ask you this again, uh, but tell us where you are. Where I am. Oh, Not I am you right personally. here in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting with the program. All right. <laughs> So we, you mean Any Woman Can, yes, is located yes. on 16, close to 1604, Santerra and um, Stone Oak, it's that corner. That Oh, that corner. <laughs> yes. Of, <laughs> of, of all the, I'm, I'm having to file, in my head all these corners are going by and I go, oh, oh that, that corner. <laughs> all right, you're in trouble. Though. All right. Now, I got to tell you, the, the, it's, it's great that we're they're having a lot of laughter because we're also going to have a lot of laughter at a big event that's coming up in February uh, that will benefit any woman can, which uh, kind of segues into our, our next uh, part of the uh, of the program here. Tell us about this whole thing. And you're the one that got to corral us all to do this. Well, I've been wanting to um, get Drew. He, Drew Bersham does illusions to come and help us do an event for a long, long time. And I also had a vision of Reuben B because he's amazing uh, blues gospel singer, blues, Texas blues, I mean. And um, I just felt like, wow, if I could get these guys together and just do a night of entertainment, something different than what we normally do, these big fancy dinners that cost a lot of money. Yes. Something that would be um, affordable for just about everyone. It's really a marketing event because I feel like more people are going to find out about us than the money we're going to make, which is even more important. And the reason why is because then we can help more people. So um, I just had the idea of these two coming together. And so I asked Drew for some dates and then I took them to Ruben and then I took them to you. And so it just, they all fell on February 15th and it worked out. And of course, my husband, Baron, he's going to take any date I give him. (laughs) <laughs> you see that? See how that works? Yeah, Baron in his head saying, how come she didn't ask me? <laughs> Up front, yeah. He just told me. No, yeah. That's the way it works. <laughs> and, and so, and you asked Baron because Baron does these great impressions. And, and really, you know, the thing about an impression is that the listener or the person in the audience will meet you halfway. Right. You know, if I say uh, Goofy and Mickey Mouse are talking... And I and I start doing Goofy's voice and go, oh, come over here, Goofy. Oh gosh, Mickey, I'm so bashful. <laughs> See, right there. See, you no, but what I'm saying is that you met me halfway. Yeah. You're not sitting there saying, you know, that's Sonny. He's he's trying to to do a voice there, but that that you're not Goofy because you want it to be Goofy because it's you, the gift to you is that it really is. It is a it is a gift, Sonny, yeah. and you know it. You can't explain why you do it, and I love your Bono Duck story on how you got that voice. You had to practice and develop it, and now it's just a part of you, Oh, isn't my it? goodness. Yeah, little Bono Duck. We have spent many, many oh. days, weeks, hours, shows uh, with little Bono coming into the studio just across the, the glass here from where we are right now, and, and, and Bono is like my Mickey Mouse. He's an yeah. al- my alter ego, and the best part of it is... I don't know, Shan, what Bono is going to say. Yeah. Well, I'll just show you. I'll just show you. Hold on. Can you open the door, please? Yeah. Just open the door there. Come on in here. I think Bono's in there. Come here, Bono. There you go. Push down here. Come over here. I need a phone book. Oh, I got a we phone book. We got a phone book? There's one. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you. I know that guy. Yeah. Yes. Good to see you, Bono. It's been a long time. His name is Baron Wiley. That's right. That's right. He, he makes the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he used to. <laughs> he doesn't do that anymore. He has people to do that for him. The Keurig. So, so Bono, you were just what flying by? Yep, I saw your car in the parking lot. Uh huh. <laughs> and and uh, how was your New Year's? It was okay, but guess what? What? My uncle, who my dad doesn't like, came to the to the sh- to the sh- to the to the the dinner that we had. Yes. And he said that uh, he was a Longhorn. And my dad is an Aggie. Ah. <laughs> See, that's why he doesn't like him. Well, I know, but I mean, that's just football. It has nothing to do with people. Tell that to my dad. <laughs> well, well, it's nice to have you here. You know, uh, we were talking about the fact that you and I met when we were kids. Actually, um, I was much younger, and I was just a, a kid myself. And you called me one day, and you wanted to be on the radio. Yep, and you gave me my own show. The Bono Duck 92nd mm-hmm. radio show. That's right. And you know what? Can we tell him? You tell him. <laughs> it, it, it's coming back. What? Yep. It's coming back. We're going to do not only that, but it's going to be a, 
A TV show, too. A TV show? Yeah, but with no camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, have a seat and enjoy the rest of the show. Okay. Do I have any coffee? No, we'll get some later. <laughs> so when do you drink coffee? Uh, so... Can I, can I also just say this? I need to ask Bona, does he still stay over at the Red Roof Inn? You mean the one next door? Yeah, that's the one. You used to stay there yeah, all the time. Yeah, but it's not a Red Roof Inn anymore. No? Nope. It's a, it's a what you call a, it's the. Come over here. It's the one where they leave the light on. <laughs> oh, that's right. It's oh, Motel 6. Mo- yeah, Motel 6. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to say it because I, I know the, the sponsors on this show <laughs> are a, the higher caliber. <laughs> See? Okay. I love it. There there it lies our, our case. See you know what I mean, Shan? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You know what it's like? It's like people who love the three stooges. Yeah. And the people who don't don't understand. Right. You know, but you've lived with one. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> so you know. The fourth stooge. Yeah, exactly. It takes one to know one. <laughs> But we're going to have a lot of fun. And this show, this is called a, An Amazing Night of Entertainment. Uh, yours truly will be the MC, And, of course, we have Ruben V. Drew Worsham. Now, I have to ask you. We had this conversation before we went on the air. Drew Worsham is an illusionist. Yeah, he does a lot of close-up magic, you know, sleight of hand. Right. Uh, very entertaining, very funny. Super entertaining. Yeah. So okay. it's going to be worth the price of admission, okay. just for him alone. Great. I mean, great. he alone. used to travel all over the United States Correct. to do this. You can find him yeah. on the YouTube and get a sample of what he wow. does. But he's, he is a professional who just happens to be a ministry over at Community Bible Church and gets to use his gift uh, to help to, you know, spread the gospel. Right. Yeah, uh, pretty definitely. Pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I just had my son uh, last week on the show, Joe Melendres, and he's an evangelist of sorts yes, uh, and, uh, and travels all over. And uh, one of the things he said applies to, to the both of you, and that is that no matter what your role is in life, you know, we tend to, to say to people what we do, but it's not who we are. Uh, but whatever it is that role is, whatever it is that gift that we're using to, uh, to ful- fulfill our purpose— uh, allows us to really uh, recruit other people to not only this way of thinking, but this this wonderful realm of good mm-hmm. that that still exists in the world. Wouldn't you say, Shan? Yeah, absolutely. And lead them really to the gospel and to Christ. Well, everything that you read in the Bible, mm-hmm. and and you you cannot go wrong with everything that that uh, that applies to you, and it applies. Through the, throughout the ages, that's what that's what I love about quotes from Plato and Socrates. You know, a lot of them you may as well have said them yesterday. There's a great quote. That in fact, I have it on the back of my business card from a uh, uh, and a philosopher in the first century, Philo of Alexandria. He said, "Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a great battle." Mm-hmm. And I could have told you that uh, a motivational speaker that we all know. Tony Robbins said that, mm-hmm. and you'd believe it. Right. But isn't that amazing how back then it is no different than now? Yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the back of my card. It says, yep, definitely. I got it on mine. <laughs> I don't like either one of you anymore. I'm going to switch the people that are going to entertain. Okay, okay, Thank okay. you. <laughs> okay, we're going to entertain you. But, but first, I want to, I want to know about, about any woman can. There's a, there's a question I want to ask you. The, the the success stories that you talked about, give me give me a just a one story where someone came in and maybe reluctantly didn't want to or, or maybe you know, something happened and it turned into just this wonderful it blossomed into a, a great experience. Well, I have a billion of those stories, but the most impactful story that I have is when a woman came in and I was um in the room when she was going through her sonogram and she was about, I want to say seven or eight weeks pregnant. And she definitely wanted to abort the baby. And as we uh, brought up the screen and she could hear the heartbeat, she started to weep and like weep uncontrollably. So we started to talk to her and, and she then started to tell us her story. And what we found out was that she had been raped. And so, um, Mm. you know, if there's a reason for abortion, and there's really none, but this is the one that I would definitely um, 
you know, think would be a very hard decision. But she started to um, then get um, consoled, and she everyone left the room except for myself, and normally I leave the room when it's all said and done, but the point is she was just staring at the screen at her picture, and we give them pictures regardless if they're going to keep the baby or not keep the baby. Mm. So I was asking her how she was feeling, and she said, this baby happened to, like, jump around. I mean, normally at that age, you don't see him moving very much, but this one was, I I tell you what, he was in there going, here I am, here I am. And so she decided um, to, I asked her if she would uh, get a counseling, if she'd go to counseling before she made the decision, because she did not have to make it that day. She had some time. Um, and we won't go into those details. But the point is, I said, you know, you don't have to make that decision today or tomorrow. So why don't you come or stay now and get counseling? And she did. And she came, is still coming for counseling. And she um, has decided to keep the baby. She's going to actually adopt it out. But still, sure. so that's the most sure. impactful story I've seen or witnessed. Wow. And, of course, when women come in, it is their decision. You're there to help them any way you can. Absolutely. And what I want to also make sure everyone knows is if that woman would have decided to abort the baby, we're going to still stay in contact with her and tell her that we love her. Mm. And we're also going to ask her to come back for counseling because we want her to feel safe and know that we're not going to judge her, that we, that she you know, if this happens again, because sometimes we'll have women that uh, just in the last two months, it was going to be her third of a third abortion, but she still felt comfortable coming in. But guess what? This time was different for some reason. Mm. Well, I know the reason it was Jesus, but she decided to also adopt that baby out. So we just want to love them regardless of where they are in life. Shan, you know, we uh, we this the show goes out across the country and actually in other parts of the world as well. And I know there's people that would like to help out. Um, how can they help besides this uh, this event that we have coming up? Is is the, can they go to your website? Can they make a donation there? How yep. can they help you? Well, absolutely, it's anywomancansa dot com. Um, so that's a way. If you don't can't afford um, a donation, we can use all the prayers we can get. If you happen to be local, we need more volunteers because we run and I have four people that are on staff and I have 40 volunteers. So it's mainly volunteer based because we are a nonprofit. When you share and give to others, therein lies the, uh, the, the other amazing abundance of, of what it is we can do because the more we give the more comes back don't you think oh absolutely and we're all i mean i always feel super blessed when i can give it's just better than anything else really yeah well you guys give more than more than than anyone i know uh in in so many different ways Sunny Radio. all right baron we've got a few minutes here little fireworks yeah. here with impressions okay okay because this is what we're what we're all about here, you and I are on the same page. Um, first of all, what's your best impression? Well, good Lord, I'll ask my wife that because she's a better judge there. What do you like, babe? Well, you know I love Jimmy Stewart. So we just came okay. out of Christmas, so it's a tradition to watch It's a Wonderful Life, you know? Sure. So there's that sure. wonderful scene where, where Mr. Potter uh, gives, uh, you know, George Bailey the, the offer to, to join him, and George Bailey doesn't have to think about it for, for very long. You know, that's, that's when he goes, uh, no, 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 no. Doggone it. You, you, you sit in here and you spin your little webs and you think the whole world revolves around you and your money, Mr. Potter. Well, it doesn't. And the whole vast configuration of things, I'd say you're nothing but a scurvy little spider. That's what you are. And that goes for you, too. And you, too. So there you go. Everybody. Yeah, I noticed that one of the U2s was Shan. Yeah. Well, and the other one was just a pretend person. I, you. I wasn't you, one. You were clean. No, I was, I was in the clear. Oh, well, my you were God. Mr. Yeah. That was right on. Thank this, you, sir. This is always just per- per- my, my favorite. Thanks for asking. Is uh, <laughs> is Lieutenant Columbo? Oh, that's your yes. And, and Lieutenant Columbo always has that that falls exit where he's he's walking mm-hmm. out. He he's just interrogated you uh, because he thinks you're you're a suspect in this whole thing. And, and as he's walking out, and, and you say, uh, "Nice to see you. Uh, I'll, we'll be in touch." Thank you, uh, Columbo, for coming, and uh, we'll catch again. Thank you very much. Uh, it's Lieutenant Columbo, if you don't mind. <laughs> I I don't want to. I don't. There's one thing that, that bothers me, Mr. Wiley. Um, on the mantle here in your house, you've got this figurine. And this figurine uh, was the same figurine that's in this picture. Um, however, 
it may be similar, it's not the exact one. <laughs> now, we know that the murder weapon was the figurine. <laughs> and we happened to, when we were going through your house, we found a, um, a receipt for another figurine in your jacket. <laughs> so I know why you did it. I know how you did it. But I can't prove that you did it. <laughs> wow. So I have one more question. Did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! That's so wonderful. And you know what, too? Because of you, right. was, we're scanning channels on the old, and we get to that Me TV and Columbo comes on. I stay there just so I can watch it Aww. to think about you. Aww. Meanwhile, the kids are going, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> God bless Peter Falk. God Big bless time. Peter Falk. Okay, you, you got to do my favorite, and I know you do a lot, but you, my favorite of yours is the Beatles. Oh, wow. Oh, well, that's my very gosh. Cool. No, that's, very nice I love you. the Beatles. Well, the first one is, is, uh, is Paul talking to John uh, because Paul's always the nice guy. And there's this great take in the studio where, where uh, John's kind of frustrated, and, and Paul just simply says, Don't be so hard on yourself, John. And, and then John just says, I'm not. Uh, but John uh, is, has that classic line that, that I love to quote there, too. When he, when, uh, and it went something, something uh, like this. <laughs> when he goes, um, I never said we were better than Jesus as a person or God as a thing. I just said it as a fact. And now it's all this. And there you go. <laughs> it's exactly like yeah. that. It's not something like that. It's exactly like I love that. It. Oh, uh-huh. that's great. Oh, what about Ringo? Well, Ringo, there's two Ringos. There's there's young, two, there's, there's, it's like Elvis. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> Skinny and fat. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's young yeah. and old Ringo. Yeah, yeah right. Yo, young Ringo was just, uh, hey, I'm Ringo, you know, but old Ringo is now. Well, when we first pulled out to Liverpool in 1964, peace and love, you know, that's that's Ringo. Oh, so that's great. It's fun. That's great. Now, all right. And, so George, and George would just simply say, he would argue with Paul, and he'd say, just tell me what you want me to play, and I'll play it. <laughs> and that's George. Very subtle. Yeah. You know, when, when I was on the radio starting out um, as, a, as a baby DJ, uh, people would call up and ask for songs that they thought they knew the title to. Mm-hmm. And a guy called me up one time, wanted to hear It's a Bad Chrysler by the Beatles. That's a bad Chrysler. And, and I said, what? Why does that go? And the guy says, it's a bad Chrysler. Chrysler, Chrysler, Chrysler. <laughs> but that's great. I want that. And a lot of people don't know, Sonny, I want to brag on you for a second again, that you also were the voice of Fred the Cockatoo on Beretta. I was. I was. How'd and, that go? Well, what happened was <laughs> uh, I got a call from an agent who said, we need a voice for a cockatoo for a series on NBC, and we need it ASAP. And they, my agent said, call this, this, uh, this uh, producer. So I called him, and he says, yeah, I understand you can do a cockatoo. And, and I, and <laughs> I, I can? <laughs> and I didn't, I didn't even know what a cockatoo was. I figured it was like a parrot. But I acted like I knew what I was talking about. I said, oh, yes, it's very much like a parrot. And suddenly it says things like, uh, hello, oh, and he says, okay, that, that's great. You know, can you be on the soundstage? He gave me the number at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon. So I went, and it was for this series called Beretta with Robert Blake. Yeah. And I did a uh, hundred different lines that they used throughout. And so I got paid as an actor for seven years on the show. And you knocked it out in one day? Knocked it out one day. We had, <laughs> we had one, other, one other session that we did. And, uh, and I got to actually meet the, the cockatoo. The cockatoo could only say hello. Yeah. So I would like match the hello. And the hello was, hello, hello, ha, rrr, ha, beretta, ha, woo. You know, and I would just make up these, these little <laughs> sounds and stuff, you know. But and, you just never know. And people don't know that some of you were in Gremlins. You did some of the voices. <laughs> in... See? <laughs> and they used all that? They did. That's cool. They did. Uh, and I, I can't tell you what that said, though. <laughs> That's not appropriate. We can't, we can't say that on the radio. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to have so much fun. The date, Shan, is? February 15th. And the place is? I'm 281 and 1604. 281-624. At Park Hills Baptist Church. Park Hill Baptist Church. If you live in San Antonio, you've got to get tickets for the event. And how can they do that? They can visit awcevents.com, or they can like us on Facebook, and they can sign up through Facebook. Any woman can. So it would be great if you followed us on Facebook. Okay. And we'll have links to every single one of these uh, on, uh, on sunnyradio.com. Anything you want to add? Oh, sure. It's just the day after Valentine's Day, so it makes a great night. It's a Friday night. It's only $40. It includes food from Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. Thank you to the Absolutely. great sponsors there. 
for 40 bucks, you get to see an illusionist. You get live music from Ruben V. Sonny Melendrez is the MC. I'm going to help out, give away some prizes, doing some impressions. It's going to be a fun, fun night. Yeah. And there's going to be some great prizes, too. Okay. And raffle tickets are only 10 bucks. 10 bucks. But if they sign up now, they can get uh, get in. 40, for $50, they can get two raffle tickets oh. and admission if they sign up now. Wow. Okay. Sweet. So do it right now. And, uh, guys, I want to thank you so much. Thank you not only for, for being here, but also for your friendship and for your mm. just wonderful kindness to, uh, to our great city and, and to the world. I'm in the room Thank with you. my my two best friends in my life. Aww. Wow. What about us? <laughs> <laughs> you guys can go now. <laughs> Bye, Bono. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Bono. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Say goodbye, Bono. <laughs> goodbye. <Yeah. laughs>